Hello guys, I mentioned on Wednesday's video that the video I was going to go today, cover today was going to be something connected to something I've already covered. Now, that I'll explain later on in the video. Um, and for those that are wondering why I talk about this sort of stuff, hi my name is Simone, I have a degree in Forensic Science and Criminology. Um, I still try and keep up to date on cases, on advancements and things like that. Um, and I did have some of the best lecturers in the country with regards to that field. So, what we're, what we're talking about today is the haunting case of Aaron, Aaron Hernandez. And there is a few twists and turns in this case which are a bit unusual. So, Aaron Hernandez was born on November the 16th, 1989, and he died on April the 19th, 2017. He was an American football player with the NFL. He was a tight end, whatever that means. By the way, I'm British, so I don't understand American football. Um, for three seasons with the New England Patriots. I do know they're a big team. That's about as much as I know. Um, and his career came to a screeching halt when he was arrested and initially convicted for the murder of Odin Lloyd um, and when he committed suicide he was 27 years old. Now, let's go into Odin Lloyd a little bit. He was a linebacker for a New England football, uh, for a New England football league semi-professional football team called the Boston Bandits since 2017, uh, 2007 and he died on June the 17th, 2013. And Hernandez was arrested on June 26, 2013, um, like, what's, nine days after the murder uh, and two others were also arrested with him. Um, and on the 27th, uh, 22nd of October 2013, Hernandez was indicted for murder by a grand jury. Eight months later, his two core defendants, or fell, the two other people that were arrested for this, which is Ortiz and Wallace, were indicted eight months later. Then, um, Wallace was acquitted of first degree murder but he was found guilty of accessory after the fight. So basically saying that he, while he, the court was basically saying he wasn't there when the murder happened, but afterwards he helped. And he's going to serve a sentence of four and a half to seven years. Um, Ortiz was charged, was uh, changed his not guilty plea um, to plead guilty for accessory after the fight. And the charge of murder was um, taken off, uh, and he will also so, um, he will also serve four and a half to seven years in jail for the accessory after the fight. Now, in April, fifteenth of April to be exact, in two thousand fifteen, Hernandez was found guilty of the first degree murder of. Odin Lloyd. He also had five weapon weapons charges um, and those crimes carry not necessarily the weapons charge but the murder charge itself carries a mandatory life sentence and he was also tried for two separate murders. I think these might be related to in-house murders. Um, in Murders that happened while he was in prison. For the 2012 double homicide of Daniel, actual fact, I'll just double check that. That they and these direct, it's not actually any prison murder. They suspect that he killed them after a spilled drink. Um. He basically shot them. While I but he was acquitted of those charges, that's why I didn't look into them further, which the acquittal happened on the 14th of April 2017. Now, 
five days later, which was April 19, 2017, at 3.05 a.m., Hernandez was found dead in his prison cell by correction officers after hanging himself with a budget. By killing himself before the, the appeal for his murder case could be completed, his murder conviction was vacated, returning him to a state of innocence until proven guilty. Um, the court and the family of Otis Lloyd are currently appealing that. Um, but I don't know if there's anything that can change it because I think that is a, it's something set in stone. Um, they're trying to appeal the acquittal, uh, not the acquittal, the... Uh, because he was in the case of an appeal so thus it was still going through the courts they can't say for certain that he was guilty now on the night of Lloyd's death and then this text two friends from out of state saying he can't trust anyone anymore in the early morning of June 17th Lloyd was riding in the passenger seat in Hernandez's car. He texted his, te texted his sister, do you see who I'm with? And when his sister responded, he replied, NFL. Lloyd's last text message to his sister read, just so you know. Initially, she thought he was blagging. Um, but we're not 100% sure, obviously, because both parties are now dead. The texts were not used as testimony because they were they didn't show that Lloyd felt at risk at the time he sent those text messages. <clears throat> now Lloyd and Hernandez were in contact just ten hours before his death, meaning Lloyd's death. And the keys to the car that Hernandez was driving, which was a rental car, were reportedly in Lloyd's possession when they found his body. Prosecutors believe Lloyd recently said something to Hernandez that destroyed it, it destroyed his trust in giving him and giving Hernandez a motive to kill him. Hernandez's house was searched after evidence surfaced that he had destroyed his home security system. His cell phone was handed to the police in pieces, he'd smashed it. He hired a team of house cleaners the same day Lloyd's body was discovered, raising additional suspicions. Because um, it wasn't something he normally did, apparently. There are also several claims surrounding this case, and this is where it links to a video I have done. Um, he requested to be cellmates with somebody he called My Heart, Someone he'd been close to as a child. There was also a suspicion that he was gay, and that relates to the cellmate, possibly to do with Lloyd or other people. We don't know. Um, his fiance says that he wasn't gay, uh, and that they were happy, and that they were in a very loving relationship, and uh, I'm not sure if I believe that. Uh, So, and now we get on to where it links to a previous video I've done. The third claim, and while I haven't seen the slide like I have with the other case, I would have pretty much guaranteed that it is true because of the sport type. When his brain was examined at autopsy under the microscope, he was found to have a very advanced case of CTE. He actually had stage 3 CTE and he was 27 years old when he died. Now, CTE has four stages, one, two, three, and four, the worst one being four. And the different stages affect, some affect, uh, actual fact, stage one affects five different parts of the brain. Um, stage 2 affects 7 or 8 parts of the brain, stage 3 affects quite a large portion of the brain and stage 4 affects pretty much the majority of the brain. Now, <clears throat> and the people, people might be wondering where this links to a previous video I've done. 
very valid question. I'll explain that in a second. But, and this is where this comes in. Erwin Hernandez was diagnosed at death with stage 3 CT. Th stage 3 CT. Now, the primary symptoms of which are cognitive executive dysfunction, depression, explosivity, aggression, dementia and suicidality. Now, depression, um, cognitive and executive dysfunction, we're not sure. Uh, depression, possibly, especially if he's texting his friends, he doesn't, he doesn't trust people anymore. And I do think there is an element of paranoia. I know it is more prominent with um, stage four, but I think he was on the latter end of stage three, early end of stage four. Um, dysfunction, depression, explosivity. He, it has since come out after his death that there were times he was very explosive, that he had a bit of a temper, that he could be a nasty piece of work. Aggression, see above. Dementia, we don't know. Suicidality, he committed suicide. Now, this links back to a previous video I've done, which is the Chris Benoit video. Um, the Both of them, but more precisely the first one. Chris Benoit was a WWE wrestler, and he'd been wrestling for probably 20 years, if not more. He was taught in the arena of the Hart Foundation and stampede wrestling by... Owen and Brett Hart's father. Uh, he knew Owen and Brett and he knew them well and he they'd known him since he was young. But the thing is when Chris's body was found in his house with his dead wife and his dead son and they examined the brain which it was the Sports Legacy Institute that examined his brain and I think it might have been the coroner that examined this but they'd have sent the report to Sports Legacy Institute. Um, <clears throat> when they examined Chris's brain, he had what they call tower lesions in every single part of his brain. He was riddled with it. And they actually said that, that was one of the worst cases they've seen. Chris was in his 40s. And if Aaron hadn't had died when he did, and he'd have continued playing, and the aggression and the explosivity and things like that hadn't have happened when they did, and he'd have carried on playing, where he did blow, it would have been even bigger. Because when Chris blew, <clears throat> he took his wife and he took his son with him. Now, <clears throat> I know the WWE have done a lot of things with regards to CTE. And they're very strict at concussions, they're very strict at brain scans and things like that. Not saying they're perfect, they're not. They're still learning. But they're starting to put things in place to prevent or to reduce the risk of these issues from happening. With um, with the NFL, I do know they have a lot of equipment. But I don't think that equipment works as well as we think it would. Especially when you have one person running with your ball and then you have, say, seven people that are of equal or bigger size than him running after him and then crashing into him and he hits the ground it's and they it's not just the nfl and wrestling they're going through this boxing are going through this but with boxing it's one of those things that you know it's a risk you know you, that if you are hit too many times it's gonna make you crazy and that it's going to cause you early dementia and that it's going to cause you brain damage you accept that risk as a boxer i'd probably say the same with the mma um i don't know if they do have a cte problem but their popularity is really only gone up any in say the last 10 15 years whereas we're talking about wwe which and wrestling in general which has been around for years for hundreds of years um more and the style of wrestling we have now has been around since the 70s so we're talking like 50 years nearly with regards to wrestling with the nfl i don't know how long the nfl's been going but i think it's been going quite a while 
So we are starting to see cases of people that are seasoned athletes, that are seasoned wrestlers, seasoned pro football players, meaning American football players, boxers and MMAs. We'll start seeing more of these cases of people where they are paranoid, that where they are aggressive, where they are, um, the behaviour isn't normal. It has come out in the last, say, three or four years that before, everybody has said it directly after Chris um, the Chris Benoit situation happened that he was this lovely guy, that he was this sweet guy, that you could trust him to do anything, 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 you know. Ne no nothing was ever too much for him. But it has since come out that he was actually quite aggressive, that he was actually a big bully, that he was nasty, and that he would just beat the shit out of people just for beating the shit out of people. There's also a situation where in one of the Royal Rumbles, him and two others were in the ring with one other guy. And this other guy had been been doing something. And the three of them just literally beat the shit out of him in, in the middle of the ring. But because it was the Royal Rumble, nobody did anything. Um, he also went absolute apeshit at The Miz for eating over... He, the Miz was... Sat on one of the benches in the in the locker room. And Chris Benoit's bag went next to him. And Chris said that um, the Miz was getting chicken in his bag, which he wasn't. It exploded on him. And he was an absolute nasty piece of work. These examples have only just started coming out. And we were also getting the same same thing with relation to Eric. And it is unfortunate and it is scary that people do suffer from something like ZTE but when you have such a fragile organ which is one of the flaws of the human plant where the most fragile organ is in the hardest shell but it's also the one organ that controls everything else. And if you fuck your brain up, you fuck everything else up. Because your brain controls everything. And it isn't easy to mend a brain. It takes time. It takes doctors. It takes specialists. With um, Daniel Bryan, I know he was, um, he was suspended. Well, he wasn't allowed to wrestle for a couple of years. Because he has he had a lesion a lesion on his brain, and they were worried that it would it could turn into something like CTE. Um, but after two years, the lesion went, so he cannot wrestle. Now, with the NFL, I think they're waiting for more research. I don't know how many brains they've tested yet, but there have there has been this high risk of people in all the different violent sports where people are dying when they commit suicide they are leaving their brain to the Sports Legacy Institute to be tested for CTA so that the, we can learn right this is these are the stages of CTA which I think even just in the 10 years between Chris's death which was 2007 to Aaron's death, which was 2017, I think in just those 10 years, because I've looked at everything I had and everything I could find with regards to Chris Benoit and see what stage of CTE he, he had. He never said, but going off the symptoms, he had stage four. Because um, stage four is dementia, memory impairment, aggression, paranoia, explosivity, motor symptoms, depression and suicidality. All of which were Chris. Um, he was struggling to speak properly. There were times he'd be wrestling and people had to tell him where he was and what he was doing because he'd hit his head, pass out for a few seconds, come to and not realise where he is. Um, there are multiple instances of him having a seizure on TV. Um, the last, his last and the year before that, Wrestlemania that he did we have downstairs and you can tell that there's nothing normal about him and when you when you could hear the way he was talking which is a motor function 
he was he wasn't normal and while I've not per se seen anything with Erin or video or anything I think that he was either just it was just before the stage where that starts to hit but if he if what hadn't happened happened he would have prob he'd probably be dead by now anyway um, because of the CTE he was 27 and he had stage 3 he was 27 and his brain was a mess now CTE is the malformation of tau proteins and the, the, the way that they um, form in the brain that prevent the brain from doing its job properly and it is one of the causes for dementia and Alzheimer's particularly dementia and the problem is we know concussions are a bad thing we know that concussions are one of the worst things you could do because it could cause serious damage I had a concussion once <laughs> it was a nightmare um, and I was not allowed to do anything for a week because every time I moved I threw up or my head spat so the fact that these guys are going out onto a field into a ring and beating the shit out of each other in one way or another and then doing the same the next next night even though they have a concussion I'm very 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 bothered by that I don't have an issue with boxing I don't have an issue with MMA I don't have an issue with wrestling and I don't have an issue with NFL what I do have an issue with is doctors not examining their patients properly, diagnosing, diagnosing head injuries and concussions, and then allowing those people with head injuries and concussions to then go back onto the pitch because they need them on the pitch. Do you really? Do you really need your blogs on the, on the pitch? Could somebody else not do it? And the plain simple fact is I understand the NFL wanting to hold back until there's more evidence and there's more information. I get that. I understand with MMA and boxing it's a risk and it's a risk that the people that go into that sport take and that they know it's a risk that they're going to end up with brain damage. So they don't, it's part of the job. But with wrestling, there was a quote um, in a Bret Hart documentary once where he said, if both people, on, in, with regards to wrestling, because it's fake, he said, if both people in the ring are good at the jobs, then nobody is going to get hurt. It's only when one person in the ring doesn't know how to do their job properly that somebody gets hurt. Now, the thing with Chris is, is he was one of those that he would jump off the top ropes. He would, he was very acrobatic because he had a lot to prove because he was a short guy in a big guy's world. And one of his fly, one of his moves, one of his signature moves was the flying headbutt. And it's that move that I've seen cause seizures as well as falling off a ladder. And... When you see that sort of, sort of stuff, it's like, mm. granted back then they didn't know what they know now and now we know that wrestling is fake and that we know that they have to do this, 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 this and this and Vince has tried to put things in place where you have to wrestle this way or you can't use this item etc. But it still happens and the fact that two of the, or the two of the four sports it's extremely common in are sports that are supposedly safe because one's fake and one has a lot of safety equipment and 
the two highest profile cases involving CTE, one of each, one, one, one case comes from the WWE and wrestling and one case comes from the NFL. And those are the two highest profile cases involving CTE. And we don't, I'm going off the um, circumstantial evidence, the evidence I saw. And if I was on that jury, even if I didn't have the training I had, and I was told he was in the car with Aaron 10, ten hours before he died, he was talking to his sister from the car, um, we, he was, he had Aaron's car keys in his pocket, we know they had contact, he's the last person people know that he was with before he died. And then to find out that the security system had been demolished, that the phone had been demolished, that the house had been cleaned by a cleaning crew, all within a short, sp short space of time, less than two weeks, the house was cleaned the next day, or the, later on that day. So... For me, circumstantial evidence, just going off circumstantial evidence alone, I would say that it was Aaron who killed Otis. Odin, sorry. And if Odin done something to provoke him, I don't know what that was. Now, do I put much credence in that he was gay? I don't know. I don't know, because I've known people that have said that they're straight and then later turn around and say, uh, no, I'm bi or I'm gay. Um, I've seen that happen. I've known that happen. And it happens even when you're in your 20s, when you're in your 30s, when you're in your 50s, when you're in your 90s, it happens. Especially when you've got to remember the sport that Aaron Hernandez is in. is a very alpha male sport and in a lot of respects a lot of people and this is wrong this is completely wrong but a lot of people see gay men as betas but a lot I know I've a lot of the gay men I've known are actually alphas so it's just those common misconceptions that if he's if he's actually gay and he's in, in the NFL he's not going to want to tell anybody because he's frightened of what would happen. So we don't know if there was a previous relationship between Otis and Aaron. We don't know if uh, Odin and we don't know if there was a previous relationship between Odin and Aaron. We don't know if the act of Odin contacting her sister, his sister, to tell his sister that he's in a car with Erin. We don't know whether that was somebody saying, you know, I'm in a relationship with this guy, and telling his sister, and then him finding out and going postal because he trusted this guy not to tell anybody, and this guy told his sister. Um, so that could be what they're relating to, they're, they're, they're alluding to when he says people can't be trusted. And the fact that the wording he used when he requested a particular cellmate was my heart. It's like some of the other language is like always oh, my friend, but then he said things like my heart and I'm like, I've never spoken about any of my friends that way. I love my friends. I've never, sp never spoken about them in that way. I've never called any of my friends my heart. I call my husband my heart. But not my best friends. Or any of my friends, regardless of whether I've known them since I was two or whether I've known them since I was 32. At the end of the day, we weren't in the room when Odin died, but what I can say is, judging off the evidence that there is, 
I would say that he was involved. With regards to the other two murders, he was acquitted, so legally he wasn't involved. But we'll never know. And there is a possibility that he didn't, he doesn't remember when, he, before he died, he didn't remember killing Odin. He could have possibly just blacked out, killed the guy, woke up, found him dead. We don't know. Because when CTE grabs hold of you, we don't know what goes on in the brain. Because your brain's not working right. Your brain isn't working right, it isn't making the correct connection for you to be the normal person that you are. A bad case, but there you go. I will be linking the Chris Benoit case up above. I won't link the video addressing the conspiracy theories, just the actual video about the case. But the similarities between these two cases are alarming want for a better word. Very alarming and it is something that we need to bear in mind when it comes to sports like this. Like I said with boxing and MMA it's an accepted risk. It shouldn't be with wrestling and it shouldn't be with um, NFL. There's safety equipment. The wrestling's fake. And you have some people that have wrestled a long time, never suffered any of this. So, but yeah, stay safe, be good, have fun, and I'll see you on Monday.